Hello, welcome to Daily Prayer on Thursday the 10th of November. Tomorrow is, of course, the 11th Remembrance Day. And the reading today is perhaps shockingly relevant to that. So let's, without ado, pray and ask God to come into our deliberations and our thoughts and prayers today and then get on with the reading. Lord, be with us this day, we pray. Guide our minds and our thoughts as we read this scripture together so that we may perhaps understand your heart a little better. In Jesus' name, Amen. Well, the reading is Matthew 5 and 38 on for some verses. You have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, do not resist an evildoer. But if anyone strikes you on the right cheek, turn the other also. And if anyone wants to sue you and take your coat, give your cloak as well. And if anyone forces you to go one mile, go also the second mile. Give to everyone who begs from you, and do not refuse anyone who wants to borrow from you. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbour and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemy and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be children of your Father in heaven. For he makes the sun rise on the evil and on the good, and sends the rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same. I have to be honest with you and say, I feel sorry for the tax collectors here. They're getting a bit of a raw deal. But in the old days, they collected the tax and then a bit extra to pay themselves. And people felt hard done by. But going back to the reading, you've heard it said an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. It was Gandhi who said that an eye for an eye makes the whole world blind. It takes a moment of thought to realise what he was saying. That if you take my eye because I've done something wrong to you, I lose an eye. And I only see the world through one eye. But there might be a situation in which I have reason to take your eye and then you only have one eye. But somebody else meanwhile is angry with me and they take an eye. And all of a sudden I'm blind. And I'm unable to help the situation anymore. And that is the problem. If we always keep taking vengeance on each other, it's a, it's a non-virtuous circle. Vengeance is not a good thing. We need to break the cycle. So if anyone slaps you on the cheek turn the other one. You've heard the expression so many times, I know. My grandfather, who was a soldier for most of his life, would have said, it's okay, Paul, you only have two cheeks. But Grandad was missing the point. If you get caught up in the cycle that you have to make take vengeance then it's not going to work. I've also heard it said that vengeance is a dish best served cold, well thought out, planned and executed with precision. And I think in truth, I think in truth that there have been times that I've tried to plan vengeance, and apart from the fact that I just don't have the patience, it makes me sad. It makes me unhappy. It's not a good thing to be doing. As time has gone on, I found that 
hating my enemy, not that I have many, but hating my enemy doesn't necessarily harm them, but does an awful lot of harm to me as well. It makes me tight and anxious. But how about we take it differently? Jesus says, love your enemy. And whenever I've ever heard that verse, I've I found it quite difficult, particularly as I was young when I was younger. And love your enemy. How on earth do I show love to my enemy, who by definition is doing things that I really cannot approve of or or really hurt me? Do you know love does not have to be soft or gentle? I've never forgotten the story of a famous footballer who the media slandered quite badly and one particular press person worse than others. And one day he's next to the football player at a bar and the football player turns to him and said, why are you so cruel to me? I'm never cruel to you. And the reporter felt pretty awful because it was true. For the footballer, I don't imagine that that was easy to say because it showed that he was being hurt. It showed that he was being upset. So I don't think loving our enemies is always easy because what he actually did was show great respect to the man, to the reporter, and trust. The reporter came away from it and changed his approach. Now, I don't know if that would happen to all of us. And I hope not all of us have people that say bad things about us. But there is this, you see. That in loving people, we sometimes have to tell the truth. In fact, we always do. It's not loving not to. It makes our life better. And it goes on in the reading, you know, that God sends the sun and the righteous and the unrighteous. How often we hear that misquoted. God sends the sun and the righteous. Since he sends it on the righteous and the unrighteous. God has no favourites. Perhaps we shouldn't have favourites. Perhaps we should treat all people as equals. There's a tough one for the day. Treat all people as equals. Well, on that thought, let's pray. Lord, help us to treat those who treat us badly well. Help us to see the good things you have in store for those who love you. Help us to understand that unless we choose to be at peace with people, we will be at war with them, we'll be, we'll be in a state of anxiety. Lord, when we do choose to be at peace with people, help them to respond in a peaceful manner towards us. Lord, we pray for peace in our world. We pray for peace in the Ukraine. We pray for peace in our time. Lord, bring peace to our lives and to our families. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, I pray that God does bless you with peace. I pray that you have joy and no enemies. And that should somebody seek to hurt you, you will find a peaceable way of dealing with it. God bless you and be with you.